all right, so let me tell you my training. The title is Dream Big. Dream Big, okay? So I want to see your hands. Where are my Disney fans? <laughs> Anyone like Cinderella? quote for our for our class. I can't really say it. I have to sing it. So if you, you want to sing it, you can. Yes. I dream there's a wish your heart makes. Right? Oh my gosh. I love it. You can't just say it. You have to sing it. Okay. But in all seriousness, think about that quote. A dream is a wish your heart makes. So when the last time you allowed your heart to make a wish. When's the last time you got away from all the daily distractions okay, to really ponder what dreams are in your heart waiting for you to uncover? So you know what? I have to confess that two years ago, when this whole mess started, um, probably like many of you, I pushed my dreams to the back burner. And survival mode, that kicked in. Yeah, I see a lot of nods, right? We all had to learn to cope with the new limitations surrounding our lives. Many of us went from the level of thrive and we downshifted to a level of survive. And if we're honest, who's honest and can say, I think I'm still stuck there. Right. Okay, so our heart is not dreaming. Instead, maybe it's driven to stay safe. Yeah. Playing small and keeping those dreams hidden means we won't ever fail. We won't ever reach a disappointment. We won't ever have to be embarrassed. And under the guise of security, a lot of women like security, right? Mm -hmm. We can remain until one day those dreams will become regrets. Trust me, friends, I can understand the need to feel safe when your world is falling apart. In April 2020, just a few weeks after the pandemic, I turned 40. I know it was so fun. Um, and since, of course, breast cancer runs in my family, I was, it was recommended that I should get a mammogram. So the appointment called for a second look, and that led to a biopsy. And so in July of 2020, I got the news in the drive-thru at Starbucks, yes, you have cancer, but it is the best kind to have. <laughs> That's not good, right? The month after the diagnosis, my already unhealthy marriage began to unravel, and going into the fall of 2020, I was yet again a single mama, tackling the challenge of homeschooling three kiddos at the time ages 13, 8, and 6 the youngest of which has Down syndrome. The month that followed brought 69 doctor's appointments, seven surgeries, four of which happened all in one week, keeping me in the ICU for eight days. On top of the cancer journey, the last two and a half years have also been filled with advocating for my children. Between fighting for full custody from their father who is in addiction, to educating myself and influencing my community on inclusion and mainstreaming for my daughter's education. Trust me when I confess, my dreams were sometimes not clear. My need for safety just to hunker down and survive every day. Those trials, that was very tempting. And sister, when the hard gets that hard, the only thing I could do is focus on doing the next best thing. That's also a Disney yeah. song, if you sing it right now. <laughs> I will sing. Okay. So when I am bogged down with the day-to-day -day doldrums, I lose sight of the bird's eye view, that bigger picture. The need for safety kept me in a very small view. Now, the here and now. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. And they will walk and not be faint. I love that visual picture 
of an eagle. Yes. I recently heard a sister sales director say that when an eagle lands at the bottom of the valley floor and looks up, the mountains are immense and immovable. But the moment the same eagle soars above, mm -hmm. the higher she flies, the smaller the mountains become. You, my sister, are an eagle. Where are you on your journey? Are you resting, searching for cover down in the valley? Maybe you've been nesting. You're like, I've got a warm, cozy nest right here in this tree, and I'm content. Right? You're going to perch there and just watch everybody else fly around. Or are you soaring high, rising above the mountains that once seemed so daunting? <coughs> I want to remind you what our founder, Mary Kay Ash, believed. You can go as far as your mind lets you. Yes. What you believe, remember, you can achieve. If you are stuck on that valley floor, it is a result of your mind. Your mindset will either take you to new heights or keep you stuck. So how can we dream bigger? It begins there in your mind. So I have six bullet points. The, the company always gives you great like tips, so I got your six bullet points for you. <laughs> so number one, here's number one. For you no takers, number one. Get inspired by the stories of great people. Who inspires you? And how can you spend time with them? Put yourself in close proximity to the women who are doing great things or who have already done great things. Read their books, posts, articles, blogs, show up to their trainings, go where they gather. There's so many inspiring stories that you can watch, of course, through our Mary Kay education and that kind of thing. But spend time, like your sales director is at least one woman that has accomplished something that is pretty significant. So definitely learn from her and put yourself in proximity to her. I think you red jackets know you should show up, right? Like, I don't have to help you that. You're here. Yeah. Number two, get crystal clear about who you are and what dreams are written upon your heart. Okay, so I'm going to show you this book. And it's definitely visual. So this is my dream book. This is something that I teach my unit. You can use any book. I just used this binder because for so long we weren't using the flip chart. So it's not a flip chart, just so you know. It's, it's my dream book. <laughs> So the first page in my dream book is all about my identity. Okay, so you have to start with your identity, who you are, what makes you special, and what makes you amazing. So this is a picture of me when I was like four, and this is a picture of me in a proud Mary Kay moment, right? So around this, I am definitely a detailed girl, so I love all those things like the personality quizzes, spiritual gift test, and I took all of them. Like, who's with me? Like, I know what I am with DISC, with basic needs, with strength finders. Like, I did spiritual gifts, love languages, so I just have all that on. <laughs> I know I'm amazing. Like, <laughs> sorry, I, I don't know. I just, I do. I just think God's awesome. So I read, look at this every day, and these things I say, I am chosen. I am cherished. I am valuable. I am loved. I am an image bearer of God. So I have things that, that I look at this every day and speak that over myself. So know your true identity. The second thing you want to do is get quiet and make a list of 25 dreams. You probably won't be dreaming big enough if you don't get to at least 25. I know it feels kind of difficult to get all the way to 25, but there's definitely a reason because you'll start to really think bigger after like five or seven things. You have to keep going. So get your 25, and then once you have your 25, you can put together a book, and you can put some visuals with that. So I'll show you a couple of mine. Um, the first page, I also put in things that inspire me, like poems. So this one is about God first. This is, uh, well, I skipped the page. Inclusion for my daughter. Mix up together. Inclusion for my daughter, and then our backyard makeover, and then a trip to our family farm. I have to show you this one in the back, it's super cute. And then your goals. I have to show you this one. You'll really like it, Melissa. 
Keep going, keep going. Look. Do you see what it is? <laughs> it's the new national too. So like put mm -hmm. your face on the suit. It's so fun. Okay. So that's that can be your dream book. And um, then once you have your dream book, you're it's probably okay. number three. After you have your book, number three is you want to uncover and then flip your limiting beliefs. Anybody familiar with the process of doing this? Okay. A couple nods. So I'll describe it even if you don't know or you already know. Okay, so what's going to happen is as you look over these dreams, your brain will want to keep you safe. Your subconscious mind values your safety over the fulfillment of those dreams. So the limiting beliefs are the thoughts that sabotage your progress. I remember learning this concept from our amazing national, you're here from this weekend, Lily Gotro. And when she first trained me on this, I was like, I don't have a problem with limiting beliefs, or I just thought, okay, I'm just gonna ignore the negative voice in my head and it'll go away. <laughs> do you do this? I'm just yeah. trying, like, yeah. you know, just ignore it. But you know what, ignoring it, I thought, man, if I write this down, isn't that gonna give it power? And it did the opposite. Writing it down took the power away. Because what happens is you get it out of your head, you write it down on a note card, and then you're like, really? Really? Like, is that really true? You know, I love the Bible, and it says, finally, whatever is true, yes. whatever is noble, yes. whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is praiseworthy, think about these things. So your new truths, you have to flip these. So I literally flip the card over and write something to the opposite, okay? Now, the zinger is you have to get to five. You cannot stop with your limiting beliefs until you get to five limiting beliefs. Typically the fifth one is the one that's really keeping you stuck. It's almost always the fifth one. Sometimes it's the sixth. But if you, if you stop at three, you're not gonna actually get to the real thing. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So the, the limiting belief on the front side says, there's not enough time to finish. Anybody ever felt that way? So the back says, in earthly time frames, the work seems improbable, but with God, all things are possible. So it could be a scripture that you flip it with. It could be a quote. It could be just new words. But once you flip your five or six, the new power empowering statements are your affirmations. Have you ever struggle with like, how do I write affirmations? I feel so silly. I am great. I am smart. I, you know, like these are actually going to get to be personalized to you. And then every day you look at your book and you say your affirmations as part of your miracle morning. Okay. All right. So number four, make a plan. I recently fell in love with this quote. The world needs dreamers and the world needs doers. But above all, the world needs dreamers your dreams will only work when you do. Talk to your sales director and map out the steps it will take. Everything boils down to IPAs. And I'm not talking about fancy <laughs> IPAs. That stands for Income Producing Activities. There are only a handful of activities that will lead you up the career path in Mary Kay. And those things are IPAs. Track them every day. I know that there's, when women don't track their IPAs every day, I know they're not serious about directorship. I'm just like, you're not serious. When you're serious, come back. That's number five. Be willing to pay the price daily. This reminds me of something that my mentor, Lily Gotro, she admonishes us, her sales directors, to stay sober-minded in all we do. If your goal is to become a sales director, then there is a specific amount of activity attached to that goal. Be honest with yourself. Are you actually willing to do the work to finish that goal? Or are you committed? Are you simply interested? So it was really funny because she she touched on that. Did you hear her earlier about committed and I'll try? I was gonna say the same thing, but it might be a little different. So I said at, at leadership I learned that there are three levels of commitment. Three levels. Level one is what she said, I'll try. That level of commitment means, you know, it'd be nice to achieve this goal and, you know, but if it gets too hard or too many obstacles come into my way, then it's okay, but at least I can say I tried, right? Level two is, I'll do my best. I mean, sounds good, right? Sounds good enough. 
But truly, to say that you'll do your best means if your best never got that goal before, then you would have to do better than your best to finish it now. So to say that you're gonna do your best is kind of like, oh hey, you know, I did my best, is it also kind of a cop out. Because you know you, you're just gonna have to look different. Number three is the third and final level of commitment, and that is I am gonna do whatever it takes for as long as it takes until I reach my goal. Sober-minded leaders will let go of any and all goals where the commitment is not a level three. I'm gonna say that again. Sober-minded leaders will let go of any and all goals where the commitment is not a level three. Otherwise, you will walk around with so much guilt around the goals that you never achieved, but it was simply because you weren't willing to pay the price. So be fully committed and be willing to pay, pay the price for what you want. Number six, do not give up or get discouraged through the flat seasons. It is while forging through the valleys in life that faith develops. We know that in suffering produces perseverance, perseverance and character and character hope. So I know I shared about the struggles, <coughs> the difficult and heavy burdens that have weighed upon my shoulders these last couple of years. But can I share with you some blessings? Yes. Yeah. In September of 2020, our Kimmy's Pink Cadillac, or our Kimmy's <coughs> Care Unit qualified for our Pink Cadillac Plus status. On November 1st of 2020, we asked for a new sales director, Melissa, who you met, <laughs> and her honeybee unit. And not only, you guys, did she qualify for her first career car, but she's already went on to qualify for her Equinox, too. Wow. wow. <laughs> The no, judge granted. The judge granted me full custody of my children. <laughs> my little Adeline is fully included in her class in our neighborhood school. <laughs> I am taking my oldest daughter, 14, to uh, on a mission trip to Africa. And of course, I am cancer free and preparing for my final surgery next year. God is so faithful. Right. Amen. Yes. Over the last several months, when people hear of my journey and recognize the depth of the struggles, they share their amazement with me on how I'm so peaceful positive and joyful under such circumstances. And my first thought is how grateful I am for how Mary Kay has taught me emotional management and the development of my faith. It has been through my Mary Kay training that I have learned to navigate life's obstacles through the lens of faith. I have Mary Kay's words written on my heart. What you think about, you bring about. And I knew that my thoughts were things powerful beyond measure. And they would either take me in the direction of faith or keep me trapped in fear. If you know much about me, you know I'm a word nerd. You guys like words? I love looking at definitions of words. So I looked up recently the word cancer. The word cancer is defined as a disease caused by an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in a part of the body. That is one way to define cancer. It's a very specific way to see it. And then here's another definition. A practice or a phenomenon perceived to be evil or destructive and hard to eradicate or contain. Notice the word perceived. Perception of reality matters more than the things that are happening. I still remember the day that I got that call in the Starbucks drive-thru and I heard those words cancer and immediately my thought was, okay, Kimberly, this is part of the journey that God has in store for you so that this experience can grow you into the version of yourself that you need to become. And so maybe your story can bring hope to another woman and inspire her along her journey. You see, I've learned to see all things along my journey as perfect Certainly not easy, but exactly what's needed. Crazy, hard, and heart-wrenching things might be happening all around me, but joy, faith, and fortitude are what I choose to create inside of me. My perception 
my strong mindset is why I did not perceive cancer to be evil or destructive or hard to contain or eradicate. From the very beginning, I chose to embrace this chapter as good. Yes. And I trusted God would use it for good. Yes. And call me crazy for thinking the way I do. I tell my kids all the time, we are not normal, and that is good. <laughs> <laughs> I think the way I think because of my faith in God and because of the Mary Kay tribe around me. It is not because of me that I am an overcomer, but it is because of who is in me and the community that surrounds me. And you have the privilege of being a part of this powerful pink sisterhood. Yes, we are truly better together, right? Yes. I love this quote. Wayne Dyer said, change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. Yes. Right? Maybe there are difficulties in your life right now. Some situations that have been sucking the energy right out of you. How can you change your perception to create more joy? And if my cancer was by definition destructive and it killed anything, it killed off the version of me that I used to be, the one it was before I survived this chapter of life. I love evolving into another version of myself through all the challenges we face in life, like the pandemic, divorce, loss of a loved one, or any other traumatic event, we can embrace growth. We can die to the old version of self and begin again. During this season, I have been captivated by the phoenix. I mean, I'm talking about like a bird, a phoenix, a long-lived, associated with Greek mythology. It cyclically regenerates or is otherwise born again. Associated with the sun, a phoenix attains new life from rising up from the ashes of destruction. So about a year ago in May, I had a phoenix tattooed right here. And at the same time where I had the cancer and then they also re removed those lymph nodes, it serves as a reminder of a regeneration of my spirit. My Angelou said it best when she said, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I, re I refuse to be reduced by it. Right. So that's my journey. Yes. What is yours? Let me remind you that there are dreams placed upon your heart. Let your heart make wishes.